Imperial War Records, started 56200.107. We have cleared the Atara Nebula. Now head to the nearby Federation Starbase, accompanied by Captain Golar of the IKB Nikitech. Once we have resupplied, we will traverse the neutral zone towards Unity 1. With any luck, any assassins sent after us by Jareth will mistake us for a simple patrol. I do not look forward to this confrontation. I have always looked to my brother as an honorable warrior. The day I graduated the Klingon Training Academy and took command of a ship at his wing was the proudest of my life. Now that seems so long ago. I hope for our house's sake, he will soon come to his senses. Hello and welcome back to Stardate 64. We are headed to Unity 1 in our new and improved 64 to finally face off with our brother Jureth. Will we find out why he's got it in for the Federation? Has he gone mad? Is Section 31 behind all this? Uh, perhaps it is our father who keeps sending us to places where we keep getting attacked and forget to tell us that we are meeting allies in nebulas. Let's find out. So, first of all, we're going to head to the nearest starbase. Uh, and as we were crossing the nebula, we will continue on into Federation space on the Federation side of the border. Uh, and we'll see whether or not our renown, our prestige, carries across to the Federation and get ourselves refitted with our little bit of prestige that we've earned in that last couple of missions. Uh, so the main thing that I wanted to do to upgrade was getting the biggest warp core. So let's see if we can actually get that now. So scroll down to here. So the cost of this crazy numbers going on. So 12,100 and then ver max version it's five, about 5,400 difference. So let's give that a go. And we do, we can have it, but our mass is too high. So we need to actually reduce our thrusters, I think, which is not good news for our turning circle. So let's lower our thrusters down a little tiny bit. We can lower our impulse, but our impulse is already pretty low. So I'm actually going to lower the thrusters down a touch. Eight. Still not enough. Wow. Okay. Still not enough. Let's see if... <laughs> Even lowering the impulse engines one does actually make a big difference, so still not enough. Okay, so we're basically going to be stationary, is what this is telling me, uh, if we go for this. We're going to have all kinds of power, but we're going to be pretty much immovable. Uh, it's unusual that it's got 9,000. We've got these, like, we can't get a better impulse engine. Perhaps Mark 5. That does work, okay. Can we even get a better... No. Okay, so that's, that's the max we can get. So we've got to lower our thruster down by about 3. But we now have 137 power to use. So that means we can use... We've only got a little bit of uh, funds left. But we see, let's see if we can actually use that to get the... What was it? The Polaron Torpedo upgrade they talked about? Yes, there we go. Look at that exactly. <laughs> 34 prestige left. Uh, so we've got the the, re the refit, the retrofit that it suggested. So we've got that sorted now. And uh, look at the rest of our weapons as they are then in that case. That's pretty good. So uh, we're not even we're not using anywhere near the 137, which means we'll have a bunch of extra power we can pump into the weapons to get all these firing extra powerfully. And then if there are any other missions, uh, we get any more prestige, we'll see if we can upgrade some of these to a slightly better version. But for now, that is pretty good. So why do the Federation Starbase have so many Klingon weapons? I'm not so sure, but with that, we're going to make our way down towards Unity 1, uh, masquerading as a patrol of the neutral zone and make sure there are no lurking Romulans or Jareth loyalists along the way that we can take out. So let's get underway. Oh, okay, here we go. So we have found a fleet of enemy ships gathered in the neutral zone. Uh, normally it's be quite a tough encounter, uh, but with a souped up 64, I think that we can take it on. So let us go wipe out some wannabe rebels here in the neutral zone. Imperial War Record started 56200.110. With Jareth leading our house into chaos and Romulans pecking at our borders, I had all but forgotten the name Rakeli. But it seems they have not forgotten us. Our long range sensors have detected a fleet of Rakeli privateers readying in this sector a last attempt to strike back at the Empire. With Kjeldabov's help, the Nekjedj has created a sensor echo of the 64, and I have ordered them to continue their course through the neutral zone. The Rakeli will think we have haplessly passed them by, whilst we cloak and move to engage. They may outnumber us six to one, but we will be upon them with such ferocity that we will deal our first strike before they can even raise their shields. 
It is a risky maneuver. But if we are victorious, it will be glorious. Red alert, move us into position. We must be swift. All power to the weapons. Mr. Kelly will think twice before trying to upstart and rise against us. Well, those polar on torpedoes are pretty good. Uh, so, with these encounters, the enemy ships uh, are kind of basically, you kind of caught them with their pants down, and the enemy ships are starting to power up. So, you've got a little while to start to do what you can to destroy them. But wow, those polar on torpedoes really are very good. So the idea is basically to unleash as much firepower as you can, as soon as you can. Uh, and get as many of them destroyed as quickly as possible. Oh wow, okay, that was really effective. Look at this, absolutely cutting through them. I know they haven't got a shield, but still. <laughs> the new 64 is a beast. You foolish Rakele had no match for us. These are usually pretty hard encounters. By the time you've got a couple of them destroyed, uh, you are. You know, there's, there's a few of them active and you're in trouble, but with the. <laughs> with the new 64. Really not an issue. And this Polar on top here is, man, what an investment. They are mincing up these enemy ships. I remember we'd fight one or two of these pirate frigates and, frigates and be in trouble now. Nothing can stand in our way. Send out more shuttles! We've got an entire fleet of them! <laughs> uh, let's turn to face the actual main weapons, shall we, rather than... Did he tell me? Wait! Let's face them properly! An end to the Rakeli Rebellion. Actually, back off, it's going to explode. Move back! We haven't got shields. <laughs> Imperial War Record Supplemental. Our assault on the Rakeli privateers was more successful than I had even hoped. The fools were caught completely unaware, and we obliterated them before they had barely managed to raise their shields, and we gave them no quarter. Let this stand as a lesson to all who would challenge the Empire. You stand against Klingon warriors and you invite only death. We have informed Fleet Command of our encounter, but we have tarried here too long and must depart immediately if we are to rendezvous with the next judge at Unity One. Well, there we go. We have decimated the last remnants of the Rakeli Rebellion, uh, caught with their shields down and no mercy given. Now, finally, we go onwards to Unity Starbase. Oh, there we go, getting moved over, excellent stuff we go. Well, here we are. Last little bit of prestige now to spend before we go and confront Jareth. Those Polaron torpedoes really were fantastic. Let's see what else we can do just to get a little bit of an extra edge, shall we? So here we go. I'm wondering, can we improve these to the Mark IVs? Can we get... Maybe we can if we lower these down. Okay, yeah. So if we lower these right down, these rear weapons, can we actually get... Oh, maybe. Five forward-facing. Yes, look at that. Five forward-facing Mark V, Mark IV, sorry, disruptors, uh, and two forward polar torpedoes. This thing is going to cut through the enemy now like a battle through butter. Um, excellent stuff. Still got 600 prestige left. Anything else we can do with that? We can get a slightly better cloak, maybe. So a little bit of a better one. Uh, anything else we can do with that? No, I think we're pretty good. We haven't got much of a turning circle anymore because we can't improve the engines anymore. But when we are pointed at you, we are a deadly vessel, so let us finally make our way over to Unity Station and face Jareth. Imperial War Record started 5620.114. We have rendezvoused with the Nek Jedge and arrived at last at Unity One Station. The Defense Fleet stationed here is overseeing the last supplies arriving in preparation for the station's inauguration ceremony. It's good to see some familiar faces. Captain Sherman and Captain Williams fought well the last we were here, and I'm pleased to see that the IKB Bloodlust has returned from Kronos and joined the Defense Force. But I still do not know who I can trust. 
I have ordered Captain Gola to keep watch from the perimeter whilst I approach the station. Giraffe is out there somewhere, and we must find him before he can strike. Go to Yellow Alert and be ready. Curmudgeon, bring us to Unity One. Maintain open comms and be vigilant for any clues. Giraffe is out here somewhere. USS Forenza, give the arriving freighters an escort into the approach vector. They look like they're missing the marker buoys. This isn't a slalom course. Seems like very ordinary comms chatter. <gasps> Look at that thing! The or maybe not. <laughs> is an Why is the bloodlust. Why is it attribute weapons and engineers to this project, but not an aesthetically pleasing design? Didn't expect you to have this particular view. Maybe because all Klingon bases are unglamorous boxes colored in brown and red? Ooh, shots fired, Captain Chairman. If your eyes weren't abnormally tuned to the blue end of the color spectrum, you might be able to see the subtle nuances of color which make our buildings so pleasant to look at. Captain of the Bloodlust wants to be on Klingon Even grand designs. had seven million discernible hues to work with, their buildings would still look like a bunch of army barracks. They are supposed to look like army barracks. Wait, we Gola? We do not appreciate Captain Gola, they are supposed to be scanning the environment. We prefer an edifice that shapes our minds and hearts for fighting. You're doing getting involved in the chat. I can't argue with that. They still look like pagoda-style dog houses, though. It's pretty rude, Captain Sherman. USS Star it's a little India. Very unstaffing, like as well. <laughs> Proceed on course. Is your cloak detector any good, Starfleet? It's a good point. This actually. would be a prime opportunity for a Romulan special operation. Dress could be right next to his cloak, and we wouldn't know. All tests magnificently. We have nothing to worry about here, Captain. How do you know that? How do you know it works <laughs> if you do not have any modern Romulan cloaking devices to test it with? Good God, I was on the case. You should be scanning, That's but... That's a good question. He's got good the questions. Is probably classified. No, no ships nearby. Ask section 31. There it is. Section 31. It is very difficult. The reason but behind all of this? To force a Romulan captain to give up his cloaking device. <laughs> Not what you were saying last time you saw the Romulans' bloodlust. Oh Lord, Golar is hailing us on a private channel. Put him through. Captain, it is the SS Dolmen Elon, the same which we captured in Federation space. How? How did it? Oh, it's right there. It is on a precise heading for the base. Scanners reveal massive energy sources on board. Red alert! It's Jareth. Yes, Jareth. Planning on destroying the Unity Starbase. He is the only one who could have released the freighter. He has betrayed the Empire. And what is he doing on a freighter? I had a warning shot. The freighter is not responding to my hails. What is Lord, going on? There are absolutely no life signs aboard that craft. Someone is guiding that ship remotely. Remotely? Perimeter alert. Why are you firing on that vessel? Freighter is unmanned. Scan the vessel yourself, Ulysses. We're detecting dangerous levels of quantum energy. Responding, powering up shields and weapons. Let's see what sort of gutless animal dares seek to disrupt this historic day. Charge all the weapons. Destroy that unmanned freighter. Ooh. Do you not see this base as the end of the Klingon Empire? We will not curl up and become pets to the Federation. Jareth, you have always been in favor of the Alliance. Do not continue on this irrational path, or I will be forced to destroy you. You will never succeed. There he is. Make full speed to Jareth. The Federation Klingon Alliance. Prepare to engage, my brother. Excellent work, Captain. Thank you, Captain Sherman. We will protect the station. Officers indicate two. Make that three new contacts. What? They are all freighters, sir. More freighters. Uh, break away from Jareth's ship. We must destroy these first. Well played, Jareth. Get a bit closer. Card maneuver warp. <laughs> Come on, another round. One down, there we go. Two to go. 
So, he, the whole plan behind stealing the freighters was all for this. Trying to somehow take down Unity Station? Was he planning on doing that back when the Rikeli attack? Was that him behind it? Still so many questions. That's what we'll have to answer for his madness. Another one down. Only one remains. You will all be destroyed. You and all others who serve the Alliance. <sighs> Jadass, you fool. The last freighter is firing, my lord. Firing what? What was that? Destroy the freighter. Come on, take it out. The point of having it. Neg Varvis will be can't destroy some freighters. The rest is towards the edge of the system. Full speed, pursue my brother. What watch out for the station though. <laughs> there he is. Ah, I can see. The captain is still following him. Up out of warp and prepare to fire. Face my brother. Wait, is he going? We can't cross that red line. Or we'll bail on the mission. <laughs> Where are you going, Jareth? Captain, Jareth has cloaked. What? He was on heading 261. Towards the Romulan border. No. Damage report. Take us back to Unity Station. Power levels fluctuating throughout the station. Let's see the what support we can offer. The entire power grid, and we're losing vital functions in the upper north quadrant. Calling Starfleet Command. Starfleet Command, you read. Please come in. This is Unity Starbase issuing a Priority One distress call. Man, dress attack works. I don't know. Several hundred at least. The North Residential Section is burning pretty badly. We're forming rescue teams and damage control parties. This is the Bloodlust. We stand ready to assist Unity. Well done, Captain of the Bloodlust. I think we've had enough help from the Klingons today. We were here oh, to help. Worse. If that last freighter had gotten closer to the station before it exploded, we would have been completely blown away. We stopped the freighters, exactly. This guy knows. Imperial War Record Supplemental. He has done it. Despite our best efforts, Jareth has managed to strike a devastating blow against Unity One. We were able to destroy the commandeered freighters, but not before they were able to fire some kind of quantum weapon, causing untold damage. Jareth was there, true to his word, hiding aboard a Fekla vessel, then turned and fled like a coward. These are not the actions of a warrior. Sending unmanned freighters to stab our allies in the back. Such dishonor. He has truly brought shame upon this house. Hail General Magok. We must inform him of our failure. Today a warrior fought a traitor. And both of them were my sons. It is a black day in the history of our house. Jareth's savage and cowardly attack has killed hundreds aboard the station. Thousands struggle to save the Starbase as we speak. My son, my only son, bring Jareth back to me at all costs. He has escaped from the fleet at Unity Starbase, but we have an idea where he might be headed. Although the Unity Station needs every ship in the area to coordinate relief efforts, your orders are to pursue Jareth. If he will not be brought back, he must be killed. We must restore the honor of our house and justice to our family. It will be done, father. It will be done. Wow, so not the finale. Jareth successfully attacked Unity One. Thankfully, only one of the freighters was able to fire off their strange weapon before we destroyed them. But Jareth escaped in a, a very unklingon-like manner, fleeing the fight. And it says here, uh, we have tracked Jareth's location to Sector 88. Uh, though it pains me to say it, you must travel there with haste and bring him to justice. So we found out where Jareth has retreated to, and the time has finally come to confront him. Will he give us the answers we need? Will he surrender? Or will it be a fight to the death? Find out next time on Stardate 64. 
thank you for joining us on our second to last episode of the Klingon campaign of Stardate 64. If you've liked the video and you're in support of the Federation Klingon Alliance, then you can leave a like, drop us a comment, and of course you can subscribe to find out when my next video is released. But until then, I just wanted to say once more thank you for watching, and we'll catch you next time.